So imagine a beautiful island with a town that looks like Venice. Waterfront restaurant, beautiful beaches, and a vivid nightlife. No, this isn't Ibiza, but it might as well be called the Ibiza of Greece. This is Mykonos, and I recently got a chance to visit it with my girlfriend. I'm Richard Sundakam, and this is About That Trip. Mykonos is one of the most popular Greek islands, and it's often called the Ibiza of Greece. The island has over 300 days of sunny weather. In Greek mythology, it is known as a location where the Greek battle between Zeus and the Titans took place, where Hercules fought and killed the giant. The legend has it that the large rock around the island are petrified testicles. If you end up going nuts around the island, you might see them. All right, so how did we get there? So if you watched my previous video, you probably already know that I was in Santorini. And the way I got to Santorini was by taking a flight from Toronto to Athens. And from Athens, we took a ferry to Santorini. And the way we got to Mykonos was by taking a ferry from Santorini to Mykonos. If you haven't seen my previous video about Santorini, make sure to check it out right after you watch this one. If you're wondering how you can find a ferry while you are in Greece, it's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is go on Google and type ferry put a location to another location and on the first result page you're going to see a bunch of different websites to different resellers. So the website that I actually ended up picking was a website called GoFerry, so go-ferry.com and on that website I bought two tickets for about 178 euro from Santorini to Mykonos. If you're wondering where you can get a cheaper ticket, what I would recommend you guys to do is to buy your ticket directly from a ferry company. The ferry company that I tend to use while I was in Greece was SeaJet, and my favorite ferry was the World Champion Jet Ferry, which they call the fastest ferry in the Adrian Sea. And if you want an even cheaper ticket, I found that you can actually go directly to a ferry port and buy your ticket directly at a ferry port. But mind me, you need to get to the ferry location about one to two hours in advance if you want to make sure to get your ticket in time. There will be people lining up and you want to make sure that you don't line up so long that you end up missing the ferry. If you're one of those people that are afraid to negotiate when you go to a new country, don't be that guy. I would recommend to always negotiate wherever you go. When we arrived at the Mykonos port, the first taxi that we saw asked us to pay 30 euro for a 2.5 kilometer ride. We didn't take that one. That was way too expensive and way out of my budget. So what we ended up doing is negotiate with the second taxi and we only pay about 15 euro from the ferry port to our hotel. Alternatively, if 10 euro is too expensive for you, you can always take a sea bus. It's about two euro for one way and it can take you a different location on the island, including Little Venice. So we were staying at a small boutique hotel called the Riva Suite. It was a really nice hotel. I was really happy with the room. Actually, the, the shower was literally located in the bedroom, which is really cute, you know, if your partner is taking a shower. It's really nice to, to enjoy that, that sight. And then we, we had a, a hot tub right on a patio, and the hot tub was giving us a clear view of the sea. Our room was actually called the superior room with hot tub and partial sea view. And when I heard the partial, I was a bit worried about that, you know, I was like, what do they mean by partial? Am I gonna see the sea or just a portion of the sea? But technically, from the hot tub, we were able to clearly see the sea. There were a couple of stuff nearby the hotel, such as tavernas, restaurant, and the access obviously to Little Venice, which was just a couple of meters away from the hotel. Another famous restaurant that was serving sushi and Japanese food in general, access to the beach and the old port. The best way to get around, in my opinion, is by renting an ATV or what they call buggy. This is what I did in Santorini and I will actually recommend you guys to do the same in Mykonos. And because we were so smart, we rented an ATV at the end of the day and we had to pay for a full day price. Yeah, the HEV's rental company will not give you guys a discount. So if you're renting a car or an HEV, make sure to book it early as possible. So like 6 a.m. Once you go to the rental company, you're gonna have a couple of options. You're gonna have the option of renting, you know, the smallest one that like a 50 cc or the bigger one that like 125 cc, which is the kind of HEV I need for myself because I'm a big guy. You can also rent a scooter or if you prefer and you feel safer in it, you can also rent a car. Just know that in order to rent a scooter, you're going to need a motorcycle license. If you don't have a motorcycle license and still want to rent an ATV, 
you might be lucky because some companies are a little bit more lenient with the rules of the law. And if you don't have a motorcycle license, they might be able to rent you guys an ATV or a buggy or a scooter. But honestly, I would recommend that if you don't have a license, do not rent a scooter. Okay, now, this is the part where I talk about what we did. So because we arrived later toward that day around 2 p.m., we didn't have a lot of time for multiple activities. So we ended up doing only a single one. Well, actually two, because we first hang out in the jacuzzi, the hot tub. Is it the same thing, jacuzzi, hot tub? What's the difference? One is hot, one is cold? I don't know. Let me know in the comment below. We had to meet our friends and their family at the old port where we were going to take a cruise ship that took us around the island. So that cruise ship was fantastic. It not only took us through all the different beaches of the island, so we got familiar with all the different beach clubs, but it also took us to a location where we can really enjoy the beautiful sunset of Mykonos. Once we got back to Little Venice, we started making plans for the night. And that night, we ended up going out. We ended up going to a restaurant where we had dinner, and right after that, we tried a couple of bars in the city. The two bars that stood out that night were Argo and Negrita. I'm sure you've heard about it. The nights in Mykonos are pretty crazy and go all the way to 6 a.m. in the morning or later. So literally to the morning. Luckily for us, after such a long night of partying, the next day we were in a hangover. I don't know how we did that, by the way. But anyways, when we woke up, we just wanted to take it easy. So we just chill at the jacuzzi for a moment. And right after we end up exploring the city, we took a couple pictures that you can actually see on my Instagram already. And right after that, we went and had brunch at a really, really cute restaurant right in the little town of Little Venice. Later that day, around 5 p.m., I rented an ATV. Stupid idea, by the way. Always make sure to rent an ATV early in the morning. We went to explore uh, Scorpio Beach Club, which is one of the top clubs in Europe, and also one of the most expensive, which a lot of people don't tell you. And during the evening, we just took it pretty much easy. We partied so much on the first day that still I didn't really want to party on the second day. And I was so tired that I was actually falling asleep during dinner. I was just exhausted from all the trips all the travel and you know and walking around and all that on our third day although we made a lot of plans that was our last day in Mykonos and we we're supposed to leave the island in the afternoon so when we woke up we just decided one more time to enjoy the hot tub I mean it's never too much to enjoy the hot tub let's be honest it's just so nice after the hot tub we had to check out from our hotel so we dropped off the keys then went to drop off the ATV and then we took the sea bus straight to the port and then we headed back to Athens and I have to say that I as soon as the ferry took up, my heart was already dropping because I was already missing Mykonos. So one thing that you should take away from our trip and our experience is that two days in Mykonos is not enough. You should definitely stay longer for at least a week or two. Make sure that you get some time to relax because we didn't and make sure that you get some time to party as well. So now I'm going to give you guys some of the highlight of our trip, including some recommendation of top things to do while you're there. So one of the things that we absolutely enjoyed was hanging out in Little Venice. We didn't get to experience Cabo Tago, but if you go to Mykonos, I highly recommend to try it. I, whenever I see pictures of that location, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the places in Mykonos that I wish I visited. When we went to visit Scorpio, I'll that wasn't really our atmosphere. We really enjoy how the club looked like. We also enjoyed the Scorpio Bazaar. So the Bazaar is a clothing store made by a brand called Caravan that is made out of Mexico. And they make those really cool outfits that you can wear at any festival. It's, it's kind of like an apocalyptic style in a way. It's so freaking cool. I really encourage you guys to check it out and get a beer if you can't afford the cocktails, but definitely try it. Wrenching out an ATV was also really fun, figuring out how to find a way around the island and just driving around and exploring a different side of the island was really exciting. And that's it, that was our trip. Hit subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this one. And don't forget to let me know in the comment below if you have any questions or if you want to know more about Mykonos. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. They told me that I cannot talk to this samurai until you hit the subscribe button.